Hello everyone. In this video we're going to be looking at a radical exponential equation. So the bases are radicals and the exponent is a variable so that's why I called it exponential. We have 10 plus 6 root 3 to the power x plus 1 plus root 3 to the power x equals 10. Now when the bases are integers the solution is a little easier. Suppose you had something like 2 to the power x plus 3 to the power x equals 5. You know, you could kind of guess and check even in this case and solve the problem. But when the bases are radicals, it's a little more complicated. So here's what we're going to do. First of all, let me tell you what doesn't work and then we'll talk about what works. Uh, a lot of times this comes up, so that's why I wanted to clarify it. People say we can log both sides. Now you can go ahead and log both sides, but that's not going to bring the x's down. Why? Because we have a sum here. So when you have a sum like a plus b, and if you log it, obviously that's not going to equal log a plus log b. So logging is not going to help. If you had a product or a quotient, obviously this would be helpful. Okay? So something that doesn't work, something that works. So we should do something else. What, what can we do? So instead of trying to log both sides, obviously, and guessing at this point would be really hard because we have two radical bases and guessing for x would be kind of crazy. But here's what we can do. We can actually find the relationship between the bases. So because if I can do that, then I will proceed with substitution. So let me go ahead and erase these and tell you and I'll tell you what will work. And I'll show you a graph at the end. First of all, one thing to keep in mind is if you have an exponential function like b to the power x, and let's call it f of x, and if b is greater than 1, then f of x is increasing. If b is between 0 and 1, by the way, the base, you don't want that to be negative. Because think about it. Like if you have something like negative 1 to the power x, for so many values, this is going to be undefined. Like negative 1 to the power 1 half. That, they're not going to be real values. That's why with exponential functions, we want b to be positive, to be well defined. And if b is between 0 and 1, then our function is going to be decreasing. Let me show you two examples. For example, if you have f of x equals e to the power x, which is a very famous function, then our function is going to be increasing and pretty much is going to look like this. And on the other hand, you may have something like f of x equals 1 half to the power x, then that's going to be a decreasing function. Why? Because as x increases, we're, we're talking about higher and higher powers of 1 half, which means more 1 halves are being multiplied, and obviously every multiplication is going to make the product smaller. Because you're kind of talking about the half of the previous number. Right? Makes sense? Okay. Now, under those conditions, what can I do to relate these two numbers? So we have two numbers, 10 plus 6 root 3 and 1 plus root 3. So my first thought should be, I think, uh, is the larger number a power of the smaller number? And I use the word larger because you are looking for integer powers may not be the case but if it's not integer power now think about it like if you had something like one plus root three and you're raising it to the power five fourths obviously this is not going to be easy to do but this still has a meaning and i'm hopefully not confusing you very much here because i talk too much but anyways to keep a long story short here is what we're going to do we're going to look at powers of 1 plus root 3 since that's the smaller number and try to arrive at this number. Okay? All right, and there's probably a better approach for this, like using sequences, but I'm just going to leave it at this. Okay? So, and by the way, um, I just thought of something that might be helpful. Uh, I'll also talk about that. I just discovered something that also has to do with uh, PALS equations, which is an interesting topic, by the way. Anyways, I digress. So, here's what we're going to do. We're going to raise this number to a power. How about square it? I mean, if you're looking at integer powers, first power is going to give us the same thing. What happens if you square this number? Okay, let's do it a squared plus b squared plus 2ab and this is going to become 4 plus 
to root 3. So that's 1 plus root 3 squared. And that didn't, that didn't give us our number, but we kind of gotten closer, right? Okay, how about uh, trying the next power, cube? Or fourth power. You can just um, do this. You can just square the square. Mm, I should probably just put the square directly. So 1 plus, all right, let me explain my thought process. 1 plus uh, root 3 to the fourth power. I want to write it as 1 plus 3 squared and then squared. But I already know this. So I can just do 4 plus 2 root 3 squared. The reason why I skipped the third is I want to show you something. And I'm also sh uh, going to show you something else. Anyways, I'll show you uh, a number of different things. Okay, hope you don't mind. This is 16 plus 2 root 3 squared is going to be 4 times 3, which is 12. And then plus 8, 16 root 3. Okay, and this is going to be 28 plus 16 root 3. And this is 1 plus root 3 to the fourth power. So let's go ahead and write these down. First power is 1 plus root 3. The square is 4 plus root 2 root 3. And then the th fourth power, I don't have the third. I didn't do the third. But the fourth power is, so it's kind of like x, x squared and x cubed and x to the fourth. And you know what x is, right? It's 1 plus root 3. And this is 28 plus 16 root 3. The number that I'm looking for is 10 plus 6 root 3. Okay, so where does this fall? Now, if you look at this pattern, you're probably going to realize that if it does work, it should be the third power, right? We'll check that, don't worry. But before that, I want to show you something else. Now, look at the x. Uh, and I want to put the root 3 first uh, because I'll show you something uh, called difference of two squares. Okay. So I'm going to look at the coefficients here, root 3 and 1. Square those numbers and subtract. 3 minus 1. What is that? It's equal to 2. Great. Let's take a look at the second power. 2 root 3 plus 4. Square 2 root 3, you get 12. And I should probably do it the other way around. I messed up. Sorry about that. So I'll keep it as is. Because 4 is greater than 2 root 3, obviously. 4 squared is 16, 2 root 3 squared is 12, their difference is 4. Hopefully you get the idea. I'm going to skip the third power because I don't have it. But the fourth power, this is first, second, third, we'll skip and we'll do the fourth. Now it is, um, hmm, I'm not sure which one is larger, so I'm probably going to have to square. And I don't know 28 squared by heart, so I'm just going to do it. It's going to be 224 and 56 and 784. Okay, great. I probably memorized this at some point, but I forgot. And 16 root 3 squared is going to be 256 times 3. Obviously, that is going to be 768. And yes, this is larger. So this is larger, so I'm good. Um, 784. Okay. I should write the radical first. And then, okay, I'm squaring this number. So here's what I'm doing. I have something like a plus b root 3, and I'm evaluating a squared, b squared, uh, but absolute value of that. I'm taking the positive value. 28 squared is 784 minus 768, and that's equal to 16. Now take a look at these numbers real quick. And sorry about that. I want to leave some room here, so I'm going to move these guys a little bit to the left. Let's go ahead and move them a little bit this way. All right, cool. Now... I want to take a look at these numbers, 2, 4, and 16. This is 2 to the first power, this is 2 to the second power, and this is 2 to the third power. I mean fourth power, never mind. Okay, so what am I missing? I am missing 2 to the third power. So I want to get 8 here. Make sense? Okay. And can I get 8 from this number? Let's take a look. What is that number? 10 plus 6 root 3. So suppose x cubed is 10 plus 6 root 3, and then, but I'm going to write it as 6 root 3 plus 10. Notice that the numbers are being switched around. That's also interesting. What is 6 root 3 squared? 36 times 3, which is 108. And 10 squared is 100. And their difference is 8. Yes, we got it. So that's the cube of this number. It's supposed to be. Let's go ahead and check it out. Cube 1 plus root 3. You're going to get 1 cubed plus 3 root, root 3 cubed plus 3 root 3 multiplied by 1 plus root 3. Sorry, that's how I 
cube sums <laughs> anyways this is 1 plus 3 root 3 plus 3 root 3 plus 9 that's 10 plus 6 root 3 yay we got the answer awesome all of this work to figure out that this is the number we're looking for okay so I'm going to go back to the original number and just work off of that all right I hope you don't mind now here's what I have and the rest will be super duper easy well we just I don't know I hope you liked it uh, I wanted to show you a couple different things I want you to observe these things very very important anyway so here's what we're going to do next if this number is a this is a cubed but I don't want to call this number a I want to call the whole thing a because that's economy better okay so if this is a this is a cubed and guess what this is awesome because you're solving a very simple polynomial obviously a equals 2 is a solution and if I set it equal to a then I'll get the x value if you log both sides ln 1 plus root 3 to the power x equals ln 2 move the x divide and you'll get the answer okay that's it but that's the real value and guess what you can do the complex values just uh, find divide this polynomial by you know a minus 2 and whatever type of division and then you'll solve the quadratic and go for the x uh, complex solution but to keep it short I'm gonna stick with this let me show you the graph and we'll be finished up with that there you go our solution in all its glory that is the x value that is real and you can see the intersection point by the way this is an increasing function there's only one solution and this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.